are back with Marvel What If Wednesdays. Here we are with the latest episode, What If Ultron 1. This was one that I was quite excited for, and man, it kicked it back into overgear and gave us probably one of the best episodes of What If yet. It's all seemingly coming together, and I'm here to give you guys my spoiler review of this week's What If episode. If you guys are new here, well, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so we can keep talking Marvel What If Wednesdays, and just in general, all sorts of geeky content like this over here on a daily basis and as well make sure to comment down below your guys's thoughts i try to reply back to every single one of you guys and read all of your guys's thoughts because i love seeing your guys's theories thoughts easter eggs that i might have missed and just in general having great conversations because we're all insane we're all marvel geeks here so leave those comments hit that like and subscribe button and let's start talking about this week's what if episode a lot happened in this one because last week's episode was what if thor was an only child well, at the very end of that episode, we saw Ultron, this Sigma version of Ultron, come through with the Infinity Stones embedded in him, and it did not seem like it was a good thing. And in this week's episode, it, it establishes that we get an apocalyptic view of the world of what if Ultron had won. And it's honestly quite scary. Like, what if Ultron had actually gotten into Vision's body and gotten the soul, the soul stone, the mind stone inside his head and was able to completely go crazy? I mean, this is something to really put into theory. And I found this episode to be quite scary to actually see this apocalyptic world. And once again, we see Tony Stark die and as well as the other Avengers. And it just leaves it out to be Black Widow herself and Hawkeye left in the world. And it's very devastating. And you know, there's a lot of callbacks to other Marvel films. We got callbacks to Civil War when they're kind of going up through the whole thing. It kind of reminded me when Bucky was trying to escape. We get callbacks to Endgame, of course, with Hawkeye's death in here. And we get many callbacks to Age of Ultron and even the Avengers, and many more, and it's just very exciting to see where this is all going. Of course, the whole entire episode, it's really much structured around Black Widow and Hawkeye, and it's starting out in there and seeing how can they fix this. They end up trying to figure out, okay, maybe we can go find Zola, which they end up finding the program. They're like, okay, this is where Zola's last copy is. If we can get there, we can get there. Hopefully he can upload himself into Ultron's brain or his hardware and everything like that and take over the hive and completely stop him. And, you know, from there, it's a pretty smart idea. Zola is a character that has always been very intriguing inside the MCU. And for this capability, it works. The thing about this episode that I really dug was, again, that apocalyptic nature. We saw a little bit of this within the zombie episode with that apocalyptic. And it was really cool, but seeing this despair and world to here kind of gave me feelings of Endgame when the world was in this state of tragedy. And I love the action and the design of Hawkeye and Black Widow in here. And I love how Hawkeye only had the one arm. Very much reminiscent of some of the old man Hawkeye comic books and all sorts of things like that. Black Widow was badass as well. And also when they go to that facility, she gets the Red Guardian shield. Which I thought for a second, I was like... I was thinking to myself, like, what if Red Guardian was alive during the end? I want to see Red Guardian in some what-if episodes, hopefully season two, but I saw that shit and I was like, hey, I dig it, I dig it. It was really cool to see her actually put it on and put it to good use. And again, once again, the animation in here is stellar. Some of my favorite animation, some of my favorite, like, scenes in general when it comes down to the smooth, fluid action scenes. And especially, like, the last two episodes I liked, but I didn't love and this one I'm actually like in the camp of loving. I actually like got up and actually sat on the edge of my seat and I was like, this this is freaking good. And especially in the way that it ends because while we're seeing what Hawkeye and Black Widow are doing throughout this entire episode, there's one important key part about this, not just Vision Ultron, it's the Watcher. Every episode he's gotten closer and closer and closer and we're waiting for him to interfere and pretty much, he's at that point of interfering now. He almost interfered to tell Hawkeye, just touch the boat, just touch the box, just touch the box. You know, they ended up doing all that stuff. But he really much was getting to that state of fear. And in this same correlation of seeing him watch these events go down, we also see that Ultron pretty much comes down to the thing of where he went to each and every planet. And one of the most shocking things is, of course, when he wins on Earth and then Thanos shows up. And he just splits Thanos right in half and takes the Infinity Stones. Like, holy shit, it was that easy? Vision could have just done that and stopped Infinity War? That's baffling and crazy to me. But 
you know, the fact that he gets those stones and then he goes to planet to planet, you see him destroy Ego, you see him go to Sovereign, destroy them, you see him fight Captain Marvel and completely decimate her, and we thought she was about to kill her. He destroys all the main locations that we have visited in the MCU and many, many more. And that's where he gets that feeling, that secondhand nature, just like um, Doctor Strange had done in episode four or five, where he got that feeling and he could see the Watcher. That's where Vision or Ultron was at that very point. And, you know, he sees that and he's trying to figure out how he can do it. And again, in that same segment of them trying to get Zola uploaded, the Watcher, I mean, Ultron breaks through to where the Watcher is and they start going toe to toe which became probably one of my favorite action set pieces, one of my favorite moments, moments of this entire first season of What If. It was intense, it was enthralling, it was very visceral in the way that it was trying to fight off. And seeing the Watcher go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this version of Ultron was freaking badass, and it shows how powerful the Watcher is because he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone who absolutely pretty much decimated an entire universe itself, and he is now trying to protect the multiverse, and it is a very intense battle for the battle of all this because even though we look at this, you know, Hawkeye gives his life so Black Widow and Zola, the half Zola Ultron bot, can escape, Inside here, it is really much, if the Watcher loses this battle, Ultron has the capabilities of doing what he does, but he's not, you know, we're not going to follow these rules and not interfering. No, he's going to go into each and every one of these worlds and create that peace that he wants, which is a scary thought, which is, of course, what we can see within the Party Thor episode. I'm sure that's, we kind of already saw the skepulations that he was probably going to be able to do that, and he ends up doing that. Because while he goes through and the Watcher is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, and, you know, there's points where you see, oh, the Watcher's going to win, and then there's parts where the Watcher doesn't win, and you're like, damn it! Come on, you got this. And he ends up losing at the very end. And it's like, fuck, he had, he, he had to go escape. He had to go hide. And it's an emotional battle in there. And I love, love, love that. I love when he gets the armor. And I love when Ultron's beating the crap out of him. You're like, no, you got this. And he just disappears. And where does he disappear to? He disappears to Doctor Strange from episode four. The little ball that he created himself, the one, the multiverse jail, of course, something of that nature, and he pretty much says, I need your help. And that's where this episode ends, leading us into next week, which is something we've been very much anticipating, is the Guardians of the Multiverse, where we assume that he's going to bring everyone together to fight off this Ultron in an Avengers-style battle. So I'm assuming we're getting, you know, uh, Captain Carter back, T'Challa Star-Lord, maybe the Black Widow Apocalypse, um, a version of Gamora, I'm assuming. Who knows who else? Because that is something we're all waiting to see, is seeing who he picks from each world. Maybe it's one from each thing. I have no idea. But this is an exciting capability. We've seen a little bit of the teases in the trailers but man, this is going to be very exciting. And for what a fantastic Pendulum episode this one was leading into next week's finale of What If. I have been a pretty big fan of this show. I really overall dig it. Some episodes were, of course, better than others. But I cannot wait to see the finale next week. And I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So hit that like and subscribe button once again. Comment down below your guys' thoughts. What was your favorite moment of this episode? What are you expecting for next week? Are there any big theories that you might be able to throw out there? And also let me know for season two of what if, what movie or what event do you want to see them do? I really want to see them do something with Shang-Chi or the Eternals, and I'm really hoping that they end up doing that. And of course, maybe even other things with inside the multiverse as things start to express and exaggerate itself, whether it's in No Way Home or Doctor Strange 2 and the Madness in the Multiverse. It is all very exciting stuff, guys, but I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to a What If Wednesday episode review. Spoilers, of course, and I'll make sure to catch you guys next week. So of course, until next time, stay classy.